I'm half Konkani. Okay. So so there always be bulk meals like a a big a big pot of crab curry or a mm. big pot of lamb curry, mm. you know. And then we all family would sit and we'd eat out of that. And there'd be this constant trade off between oh I have more pow and less curry. Can you pass me some curry? And then you'd have more curry and less pow. And then hey, can you ca- pass me some pow? And mm. <laughs> you'd end up over eating. So food was always <laughs> food the protagonist was, in the Shah family. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. Look for the silver lining. Whenever a cloud appears in the blue. Today's world is more complex than it's ever been. as are the problems that this diverse connected world creates thus it's never been more important for people to be able to connect the dots between different subjects to come up with comprehensive creative solutions that account for numerous variables making up any important decision yet as a society we continue to get more and more specialized the majority of the workforce is trained to be hyper specialized in a specific subfield and are thus siloed to a narrow line of thinking and skill development here is the thing without an intentional effort to expand it's impossible to see the big picture and think holistically which are key traits for any successful leader embracing this path to enlightenment could greatly change your life in many ways making us more successful fulfilled and confident and as the idea grows it could change the world for the better Hello and welcome to another episode of Between Us Make Every Conversation Count. Today I have with me a true polymath, a writer, a thinker, a musician, a cook, and now owner of a homestay, Gaurav Shah. Hey you ki kam you got a story for you. So slow and steady wins the race. How does that work for you? Like I mentioned, it's a variable of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you set goals that are decade long, uh, you know, you know that it's not a get rich overnight kind of uh, mechanism. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that I have built for my own uh, sanity is uh, patience. Mm-hmm. Uh, but patience alone is not sufficient. Uh, one needs to exercise. uh what do you call it uh, perseverance uh, activity you need to execute in order to move forward mm-hmm. uh just sitting and ideating and manifesting is insufficient again and i think uh, so so it's it's a culmination of not hankering over immediate results mm-hmm. setting long enough goals mm-hmm. and taking them in real bite sizes chewing on small amounts of information and, and incrementally increasing your uh, uh uh you know on your on your deliverable whatever you set out okay quick question for you yeah. you said it's not about manifesting or is it or is it it's not just about manifesting not just about i mean like like uh uh jim carrey says you know you can't say i want 10 million bucks and go eat a burger you have to like you you have to literally yes you have to execute you have to right. put in the like so i used to run a company and uh, research is a um, it, it's highly time consuming uh, and mentally exhausting profession and i've worked for 22 hours over a decade uh, more than a decade and we have this thing that goes which says research doesn't require just blood and sweat it takes your bone marrow uh interesting so with that rigor in mind um 
I just end up applying that to every facet of my life, which is you. You can't just say I want ten million bucks and <laughs> then go eat a burger. Right. I'll hold that thought for once. Yeah. Um, the song you composed for your son. Yeah. During COVID, right? Talk me through your parenting process. How 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 does it work? And in, in terms of, it's interesting you you compose this song and there's a deep rooted meaning within it. How much of it? He, has he picked up and i know he's just 5 years old but how much has he picked up with the song all right so just a quick context to that i mean in order to explain my parenting so there are two questions there explain my parenting and how much has he picked up of the yes. song so to address the f- second one uh, which is he's probably picked up nothing of the song consciously mm-hmm. but subconsciously i think he has absolutely which brings me to the first part of the question which is tell me a bit about your parenting mm-hmm. and i'll have to go back to set a context which is the my parenting flows through my personality so i'll have to tell you about my personality now mm-hmm. which is i uh, i'm more mischievous than him i am just so that he can feel more mature okay. you're more mischievous than him just now now ever since ever since okay. i've always from, ever from since your, from your growing up days no no with my son right okay no. his growing up days okay so no the reason why i asked that as you said i'm more mischievous than him i thought probably when you were of his age you were more mischievous than no no oh, oh sorry my bad i thought when you said tell me about your parenting i thought me as a parent like my parenting side perfect, but you perfect. mean my upbringing uh well i i would say how you were as a kid vis-a-vis how he is oh, in, in, okay, in terms okay. of it uh i think uh i think there's a vast difference mm-hmm. because when i was a kid i was called todumal okay and i'll put that in context to <laughs> where how it leads to where i am today in life mm-hmm. okay and when i was young i had this compulsive need to take things apart and i thought i'm being a scientist i don't know or, you know <laughs> I, w- i was probably destined to be a researcher because mm-hmm. i had to break things apart so i had ha- i had a collection of about 300 pens f- of which i taken the nib out and i taken the the ink suction mechanism out and you know those chef pens and those <laughs> uh, ball point pens and i just take them apart i got a soft toy i take the so on and so forth i just and my parents would never get me anything because they like you don't value things in your todu mal and stuff hmm. but i think as i grew older i start i started realizing that now when i cook food or when i make or, or when i got into studying music or when i got into research as a profession hmm. uh it's all about looking at uh, looking at a subject and looking at its uh, elements laying them on the table getting a bird's eye view about okay what is it that i need to address what are the what are the parameters that make this a whole mm-hmm. and uh, well you might you might see a table or you might see a clock but you know there's there's all this mechanism that goes into making the clock be mm. one unit one seamless unit sure uh so coming back to the song that i played for my child it seems like oh wow okay so you've seen the end product but what's gone into creating that simple little song is many years of looking at bite size info okay what does this triad do and what does that chord do and what happens when i piece this chord with that chord and how do so yeah so to address your question about my personality and my parenting it's uh uh as a child like i said i was todumal and i inevitably got into breaking down subjects hmm. uh so for me now as a parent uh with my child he sees me going through the process of dissecting things mm-hmm. okay which is okay i need to learn a new recipe and now right now i'm obsessed about japanese food mm. and yeah uh, you know so something as simple as yakitori which you'll get on a skewer with simple but the japs have an entire book on the art of butchering a bird sure <laughs> sure okay mm. and so which brings me to the same point you know it's the same gorav who as a kid was called todumal who's trying to get a pen <laughs> into its mil- in, into its 50 pieces right into 50 mm. parts it's the same thing that they're doing with bird there's nothing really different about that mm. about that so my son sees me taking things apart but not in a barbaric sense not in like a destructive sense uh it, it, he sees the curiosity he sees the element of uh, you know study he sees the method he sees the joy he sees the uh, processes that lead to the final product mm-hmm. he see and i involve him in that so he sees me having fun he sees me daydreaming he sees me executing uh, you know working he sees me putting ingredients together to create a product hmm. whether that product is a song whether it's a meal whether it's uh, you know it could be poetry it could be anything 
or lyrics or so now you are a musician yes you um run a farm stay yes you write yes and and the chef and the chef do you feel but it all began with you being in the field of quantitative research right qualitative qualitative research right, right? right. tell me or walk me through that experience and how that probably helped you shape up to all the different things you're doing or was it you know i've done that been there let me seek yeah new avenues is that it or is it some of those experiences during your qualitative research days let me describe qualitative research in a sentence which is qualitative research is the other side of quantitative research hmm. quantitative research is about measuring it's about statistics uh whereas qualitative research is about understanding correct it's about understanding things that can't be measured sure uh, okay such as people's attitudes perceptions beliefs you know what do you feel about rum hmm. uh, why do you drink rum you know i uh, i'd like to hear that as a narrative as an emotion rather than saying you know uh which of the would you rate this on 0 to 10 <laughs> you know and then but that number becomes inert then uh, but how did you how do you rate that as an emotion i mean how how would you can you just break down that i mean how would you let's say a human behavior let's let's take the example of let's say procrastination would you be yeah. able to uh break that down or yeah sure okay. so yeah sure so if you if you look at uh, uh let, let me take something even simpler okay mm-hmm. let let's talk about playfulness since we're talking about parenting and sure. right so sure. let's talk about playfulness and now uh if i need to understand playfulness from a qualitative perspective uh i i the way i visualize it is i visualize concentric circles mm-hmm. uh, okay that's where my mind takes me uh, the, the first element of the con- concentric circle is i need to have the ability to poke fun okay, okay. if i if i can poke fun i've burst bubble number 1 and i've got into proximity now mm-hmm. okay if at at the step of bursting that of, of poking fun if you have created some resistance it means you're not i'm i don't have the license to be playful with you sure sure at just this first point mm-hmm. okay now if you've given me that license okay you can poke fun at me and i'll poke some fun back at you mm-hmm. you've moved to the next concentric circle which is proximity true okay hmm. now once you've got to proximity you've burst that bubble and you've gone to the next concentric circle which is intimacy hmm. i and was just about to come to that once yeah. you've come to intimacy okay i can be playful with you without it scratching your ego or anything you know and now we can genuinely be playful with each other so just to give you i mean the way this would get applied is let's say tomorrow i'm a children's brand and i want to work my packaging on playfulness or something i don't hmm. know I'd start with thinking of poking fun. <laughs> so I think most of us take us too seriously, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to figure that out. Yeah. So coming back to uh my question about if those experiences around qualitative research. Yeah. Did did you at any given point of time reach a stage where you said I think this is enough and maybe I I need to get out of this or was it This is great but this is also helping me move to avenues which I've always wanted to do. Did you always want to play music? Did you always want to cook? Did you always want to do? So I mean the, interestingly this you know we always read this uh what you seek is seeking you. Do you feel all of the things you do right now they found you rather than you finding them? So uh the way I uh, so I'm a Gujarati Hmm. okay and when people and when when people say oh you're god of shah i'm a shah to high five you know hmm. but uh then when i tell them but yeah i'm not i, I don't practice religion hmm. you know uh, i'm an atheist i uh, and and then i follow that up with saying i'm not here for the gujarati experience i'm here for the human experience mm-hmm. uh and no offense to any one who wants to believe and practice what they do but uh it just doesn't work for me and when you look at so when i look at it from that perspective that i'm here for the human experience i want to eat do experience things that any human being on the planet can without mm-hmm. being you know boxed by without being boxed in a certain framework which i don't know who created and I, and like i said i don't believe in a whole bunch of things 
uh, I just don't follow I don't follow sport I don't drive I don't watch OTT I don't you, know, you can call that boring but I live an extremely rich life with you know reading and cooking and uh, composing music and having the time to spend with my child uh, richness in terms of your personal life experiences in terms of the human experience hmm. but to answer your question about you know like so were you just like done with qualitative research or did, or, or the whole point about what you're manifesting is seeking you hmm. uh i think the context to that is i started way back i started working really early i was always into music hmm. i mean music has been an integral part of my life hmm. food and you know celebration around food as a konkani was always a huge part of my life we so always had this konkani i'm yeah. half konkani okay so so there always be bulk meals like a a big a big pot of crab curry or a hmm. big pot of lamb curry hmm. you know and then we'd all family would sit and we'd eat out of that and there'd be this constant trade off between oh i have more pav and less curry can you pass me some curry and then you'd have more curry and less pav and then hey can you ca- pass me some pav and mm-hmm. you'd end up over eating so food was always the food protagonist was... in the shah family uh, uh, yeah in yeah. the with grandparents and uncles and everything as, as mm-hmm. i was growing up and so music was always there my mother used to sing my dad used to play the sitar uh, you know we were encouraged to get into hindustani classical music mm-hmm. uh we'd have ganpati at home for the longest time and my grandmother would have uh, would would love the idea of what they call a bhajan mandali or a kirtan hmm. Hmm. Uh, a band if i may call it uh, <laughs> you know which would come home with a tabla and a sitar a tanpura and a harmonium and all of that so so we'd have those baithaks in the house hmm. my grandmother's sister uh, was a dancer she'd been in old marathi films uh, oh that's interesting So so there are things like that which like you know art and performance and all was always part of the family. Mm. So music so that sorry that's that's just about the fact that music I I grew up in a musical environment it may not have been western classical music it was in jazz and blues and all right. of that which I mean which I got to later but you grew up around music right I grew up around music right yeah uh but was there during growing up any part of uh, you which said okay i want to do this i want to play something or i want to learn this was it there or was it more about um okay it's there around me i kind of feel good about people playing music no i never identified with any of that by the time i had an opinion about this hmm. uh there was mtv and i was seen as a rebel <laughs> so you can't you can't juxtapose pearl jam with <laughs> you know with with hindustani classical and bhajan music and all you know and the mm. kind hindustani classical and pearl jam just they don't compute so uh, but both are music but both are music exactly yeah. or like you know when you start listening to jazz or when you start listening to you know weather report or like mahavishnu orchestra and john mclaughlin and all of that and the family wants i mean when i say family i don't mean my family but like anything that you consider family society community this mm. that they do, they want you to be inclusive you know it's like they, they can't have a conversation with you about your music if you you're listening to something alien hmm. alien to them hmm. so you so i felt like this license to have a, to be an independent thinker to have your own to have your own choices was i was being robbed of that and so in what way you know if you if you wanted to get into music you'd have to do hindustani classical music hmm. playing a guitar for them meant pearl jam <laughs> it meant noise it meant that okay like you know so you play music but you play music what's going <laughs> no this is i'm talking about my childhood yes. uh, yeah but i had to i so so i've made certain calculations in my life about so uh, about detachment which hmm. is you know i need to in order to be an independent thinker in order to be an explorer in order to be a researcher i need to move out from the away from the things that hold me back okay uh, uh which includes anything like what we were talking about a bit earlier uh, you can't set out to play bark or you can't set out to play a, play a comp so you have to address every little step and say what's holding me back from moving from 1 to 2 and then identify that let go of it and then just move to step 2 talk me through that process of yours where you say i i don't i can't you know i have to step back and i have to step forward right i mean th- right so in order to in order to be able to play guitar freely or in order to be an independent thinker and not be clouded by the popular views and beliefs i had to leave my house mm-hmm. <laughs> so that i could so that i could live on my own terms in order to live on my own terms and move out of my house i had to earn money 
so mm-hmm. I could fund myself, which is what I came to about the Adidas job, uh, right after school. Which was just after your school, right after right? school. Yeah. Right. So, like in the eleventh standard, while all my friends were partying and all of that, and this, I was busy working at Adidas first a half part time shift and then a full time shift. And there's and an interesting story around that, right? Where you saw your friend inside a Levi's store. That's right. Yeah. So uh, do share that story. <laughs> I really want to hear everyone to hear that story because that's interesting. There, there was this ritual where every morning uh, before we went to college, we go and grab a bite because college started at seven thirty in the morning, eight in the morning, or something like that. And uh, we'd go grab breakfast, mm-hmm. and on the way uh, to the breakfast joint, uh, there'd be an Adidas store and a Levi's store, and uh, I'd see the sign which said, "You know, salesperson wanted." Mm-hmm. And uh, we'd keep, I'd keep passing that sign, and I'd keep look at looking at the Adidas and Levi's store also because they were aspirational brands for me. Mm-hmm. You know, in absolutely. Sense, like, back in '95, '96, yeah. uh, they had just come to India, and uh, so I, I'd, I'd look, at, I'd keep looking at the window, uh, and. Uh, an interesting time because that's when the Indian economy was opening up. Opening up. Yeah. So we. Uh, so subconsciously, I think the salesperson wanted wanted me wanting to step out of my house, me wanting to get financially independent, all of these together. And then one day on the way to breakfast, I see a friend of mine inside the store, mm. and uh, so a light bulb went off, saying that's my uh, hook, uh, you know, to get into this uh, and apply. And one day I didn't go for breakfast. <laughs> you know, it's just like that goodwill hunting bit where I just didn't show up. For, and lo and behold, uh, I got the job at Adidas. And uh, I think as an 11 standard kid, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. W- was it there shaped- an interview process at all? Or was it like... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it it was just about. I mean, what do you ask a ten year old, ten standard kid? You know, what have you done? <laughs> yeah. How it, do you see yourself five years down the line? The, the, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just about how malleable are you? You know, how True. how how porous are you mm. in terms of uh, and how confident are you? Mm-hmm. And. Uh, it's not so there was none of the you know economic factors like oh i need this money to survive or there was none of that hmm. uh i went in it purely for the thrill uh, for the logic that my pocket money was 250 and i was earning 1750 as a part time employee hmm. and uh, i was getting to work with a cool brand um that i'd meet a lot of interesting people um I've always been an extrovert and I love conversation and I love meeting people. So I thought it would be an enriching experience. And uh, what ended up happening is, so initially people would make fun of me and say that, oh, you're working as a shoe salesman and you're working in a you know a shoe shop and mm. all of that. But uh, just the sheer, the, the sheer things that I learned in the first month validated that I'm, I'm going to gain so much more than I would compared to going to college. Mm. Uh, not just monetarily, like just to give you a few examples, how do you visualize a stock room? You know, 14 mm. types of display lacing. What are the different kinds of spots? Like what's the difference between a lateral spot versus a vertical spot? And how mm. does that go into shoe design? And how does that go into cushioning? And what's the difference between gel versus air versus foam cushioning? And how does that impact the joints? And how does that impact And, and this was all a part of your job profile to know... All part of my training, the first right. month. And today when I walk into an IDA store and I see the lack of, you know... Uh, just fundamental product knowledge mm. amongst I'm like I, I guess they don't do that training anymore now you know? or probably we've reached a stage where everything is well it's uh, not required I guess mm. you know uh, yeah I don't know but but back in the day it, it, so it, it it wasn't about the money at all and uh, you know well sure it, it helped because I got a disc man before everybody else I could <laughs> collect CDs uh, you know, and back in the day, Adidas and Levi's would sponsor concerts and, you know, we'd get free tickets. We got 40% employee discount on apparel and shoes. Mm. And uh, so there were perks like that and they'd play cool music in, in the store, you know, so there was always Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. And so there was a vibe going on. There were young people who were like-minded and that that's where, so coming to manifestation, uh, I, uh, a research agency, which I ended up working with for 10 years, uh, uh, they got in touch with me about recruiting young people hmm. uh, for uh, a Levi's ad. Hmm. Okay. And hmm. I said, yeah, sure. I know a bunch of customers who are or like, I, I can get eight, ten, eight people for a focus group. Hmm. Uh, and they get Planet M vouchers in return <laughs> back in the day, uh. <laughs> you know. And uh, I did that. And then they got, uh, I don't know if you remember that ad, Mr. Love, Allah, Allah, mm-hmm. Allah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm. so th- those days. And uh, that reminds me, we've got to get you playing something.
so I did one of those. Uh, it was a good gig. I got money for recruiting those guys, and then I did another such. Uh, you know, can you get me some cool kids for, uh, you know, what was that? Uh, sa- satellite radio had started coming in. Yes. And like yeah. yeah. So, uh, sound soundscape something. I don't know I, what I, it was I, I forget that. Yeah, yeah but, but you know what? Yeah. I mean. So yes. so I did a bunch of these, and then they were like, "Hey, why don't you come work with us?" Hmm. You know, and uh, I started off as an intern there. And ended up working with them for four years, slowly climbing the ranks. And mm. uh, they said, if you really need to get serious with your growth in this company, you should go to an MBA. Mm. And I didn't go to an MBA for the academics of it. Uh, I went there purely so that I could come back and get serious about my. Job. And again, now those years with the research company were more valuable than the FYSY TY BCom, which I did correspondence. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Just so that. So it's the same analogy, you know. So what I did in the tenth standard was I got this job just so I could move out of home and listen to Pearl Jam and play guitar and be an independent thinker and meet new people. And uh, the reason I went into an MBA was just so I could continue, you know, the amazing experiences that I had in the four years of uh, hmm. qualitative research as an intern and whatever, or as a junior executive. Hmm. Uh, so an MBA was just a stepping stone. The job at Adidas was just a stepping stone. And when I got to my MBA, I was the president of the student council, mm. uh, and that I mean, I was articulate and I could still play guitar and like you know whatever. So, and that led to a whole different set of learnings. Plus, mm. I had four years of work experience in a field which was niche qualitative research and. Uh, and then I got out of that, and uh, when I joined this company, I started heading a division of theirs two years later hmm. after my MBA, hmm. and that that was a real uh, pivotal moment for me because suddenly uh, I'm just two years out of MBA, and uh, I have KRAs. I have like serious, you know, this is the amount of annual billing that we expect from you. You'll be managing a team of these many people, and like you know, you're going to be client facing, and you're. Just two years after my MBA, uh, and uh, so I did that. I worked with this company for ten years, and then I moved into uh, uh, I, mo- I moved out in two thousand and eight to set up my own company, which was bang in the middle of depression. By this time, when I quit five and a half years later, I was just thirty two years old, hmm. <laughs> and I'm like. So when I look at it from the perspective of like you know you started after your tenth standard, and by the time you've already done all this, you're still just thirty two, man. I'm like, what now? Like you know, when when you said Levi's and Adidas were aspiration the brands at that yeah. point. Yeah. So at that point in time, when you were in school and you were you you picked up this this gig which came to you, were the aspirations uh, at that point in time to move out of the house and be independent? It kind of flowed with you, right? Your life experiences, whatever you learned, Absolutely. and that's how your aspirations uh, moved. Yeah. So, at thirty-two, having been an entrepreneur, having worked, what motivated you to? I your... didn't want to be boxed in a professional framework. I realized that I I realized that I'm I'm living to reach the peak of my professional career. But what about the depth of my soul? Hmm. And interesting. And that conversation with myself just made everything glacial. I was like, you know, the I, I have a finite set of hours in a day. Hmm. If I devote 22 hours to research, sure, it's an interesting profession, but I've done it for 15 years already. Hmm. You know, by the time I'm 32, I, I've run my company, I've met cl- I've handled projects, overseas, Indian, whatever. And it's like, okay, there has to be more to this human being that he can explore. Uh, now there is no monetary fight. There's no like you know I'm not I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I've proved to my parents. I've proved to like my peers. But most importantly, you prove to yourself that you know. Yeah, but it wasn't about that. Like I mean, for any like if I take the guitar example, if I take the research example, if I take the food example, I couldn't I couldn't make more than an omelet when I got into cooking. I couldn't play more than a note when I got. Started playing guitar. Yeah, but it and, always starts like that, right? Yeah. So, so it's like the the perseverance of mm. uh, uh, you know just showing up every day, getting incrementally better. Mm. Uh, we 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 touched upon this thing about pushing a bit back and moving a bit forward. Consistency right? and discipline. Consistency, discipline, and curiosity. Mm. Uh, so uh, the act of just showing up every day. Okay, fine. Uh, today I'm 22 years, 21 years into research, or it's been 20 years. I've been playing guitar or uh, you know been a student of music mm. or in some form or the other uh, 
but it was never with an end goal in mind it's just like you you just go with the pro- you just show up the next day and okay fine like you know you put your best foot forward and you're like okay what what's what's the agenda for the day you you mentioned about having worked internationally right yes uh, yeah. so um new cultures new languages communities yeah, yeah. how has uh, did that help in shaping what you are today i think it's so uh, it's not so much about Sure, I mean one can learn from travel and one can learn from interacting with people from diverse cultures. Where were your travels to? Uh, largely, was it the US, Europe, for work? Uh, well, so I've covered almost. I, I mean, uh, so, so US, uh, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, UK, Ireland, Scotland, uh, Japan. It's all of that. And uh, but but uh, what's far richer is books. Hmm. was far richer is cinema hmm. you know so, uh, i don't say films I, I, like so so was far richer is cinema uh, you know I, like I get the that. human stories mm-hmm. books uh, you know music uh, any favorite authors i would say that i read non fiction firstly mm-hmm. so i don't have a favorite author per se but uh, i'll read anything that piques my curiosity in the sense that i'll give you an example uh there's a book called the hero and the outlaw hmm. which is about young gen archetypes hmm. i'll read that not because the author is famous or because it's like a legendary you it's know it's the story it's it's about it's about archetypes hmm. uh or uh for instance there's this book by andrea wolf which is uh the invention of nature mm-hmm. which is about um alexander von humboldt mm-hmm. uh and His, it's it, it's an amazing piece of work. It's an amazing piece of work. You've yeah. seemed to have yes. read it. Yes, it's an amazing piece of work. Or there's another book. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the author, but uh, or let's say you know the poetry of Pablo Neruda. I mm-hmm. love reading that. Or I like reading V. S. Naipaul. Or mm-hmm. I'd, like I mean it doesn't. I I I. Or there's a book that I just recently finished called The Maturing Mind, which is from one of those. Uh, uh, Pre pen like it's it's like a penguin publishing kind of but uh, it's a it's a from a series of books about hu- human development before self help self help was a thing sure so it's about the maturing mind and it's, so I'll read anything that piques my interest even if it's unpopular and and the same holds true for cinema too same holds true for cinema too mm-hmm. it just happens to be that this curiosity has led me to watching Kristof Kristofsky or Wong Kar Wai and Kuru Sawa and like all these names that we most of us know uh, Ritwik Ghatak and Satyajit Ray and like whatever it just happens Do, to be but i don't so books cinema food yeah research is, is there a time when you are just to yourself thinking nothing doing nothing every day every In fact my day. wifi password is do nothing <laughs> okay yes. so that is <laughs> that that's my uh Uh, now that is my like uh, stp standard mm-hmm. temperature pressure kind of mm. scene uh, which is so was it always like that did you always no, have no i didn't that? have the bandwidth earlier right. i didn't have the bandwidth i didn't have the luxury because when you're working 22 hour days for a long time mm. in running a company and all of this you don't have that flexibility at all mm. uh, it just doesn't go with the job description so like you need to get out of that to be in a, and i think this whole act of stepping out of normality you know it just opens more doors i have met so many amazing people because i've been into music or because i've been into cooking when now uh, i have friends who are from the research fraternity i have friends who are restaurant owners i have friends who are from you know the, the music scene and uh, not just musicians but like people who organize events and this and magazine people and you know no, podcast I, i know you, you you told me when covid happened and uh, the house helps and the cook stop coming that's right and uh, your wife told you go out there and cook whatever you can yeah well <laughs> it wasn't is, as simple is, is, as that is, is, but is, yeah is that how it happened yeah we just gave each other this look and it was <laughs> obvious that i had to go into the kitchen and and that's and how the chef gorov shah came into born. being okay yes. that that's how. i couldn't I, i couldn't make more than omelet and maggi before that you know every time i think one of the things that i ask myself is what prevents me from being the same four year old gorov that i was Okay. Okay, and I keep reminding myself to. So we were talking about daydreaming and stuff, mm. right? And I, I love getting. Now I have the luxury and the time to do that because mm. if I want to compose a piece, I want to write lyrics that fit, uh, you know, a certain piece or whatever. If I, I need to get into that state of reverie. Hmm. That day where, 
uh, it's like some of the best ideas come when you're gardening or showering or swimming or you know or just sitting by the chair. Plus, as a farm stay owner, I host people a lot, and I need one hour of silence every night. Hmm. Uh, I need. I cannot eat. food with people on the table i need to sit by myself and enjoy my food in silence it mm-hmm. might seem a little stoic but that's life for me i was about to come to that the farm stay yeah a lot to do with your state of mind where you felt that i need to you know be with myself and is is that a a, a brain child or uh, of of that whole evolution of yours where you felt that the farm stay probably is the final answer to where i can be myself or i can be calm no uh, no it's not i mean it's a stepping stone to where i want to be mm-hmm. uh it's so i, I think one uh, and i'll give you this very classic case i could be sitting idle seemingly idle for about an hour or so and my wife will think you know he's just daydreaming or he's like killing time and stuff like that and there are these three errands to be done and she'll come and say hey come on like you know we need to get this sorted mm. and xyz but i could be composing a song in my head hmm i could be just organizing lyrics you know in my head and i i'm still on the, on the exterior but there's a lot of things happening in my mind hmm uh so just because i live on a farm stay and it's super tranquil it doesn't mean i'm idle the physical stillness should not be taken lightly absolutely you know and i i i really value that because i i just love I, that I, the yeah, physical stillness should not be taken lightly yeah because because the, so here's the thing the guiding philosophy between the, behind that is if you have 3 hours to chop a tree spend 2 hours sharpening your axe and i think just organizing your thoughts in your head before you even pick up the guitar you know or even before you even pick up a pen to write is just so helpful because when you sit by yourself for an hour and you just organize your thoughts and just figure out what is it that i really am trying to attack mm. okay and once you've cracked that in your head you pick the guitar it'll take you 30 seconds to finish a song mm. okay Okay, rather than you sitting with, and uh, the same thing happens in research, like with PowerPoint presentations, or if people try to write a slide, every slide, and think about the next slide as they approach the next slide, it's going to take them ages to finish that presentation. And But int- if you've already cracked, if if you know the uh, the conclusion of your presentation, you're just building a narrative. Just, mm. Everything just leads towards. So this is the conclusion. In you know, uh, in summary, these are your key insights. <laughs> so. is uh, ye to yeah which basically means i'll see you soon is that the beginning of gorav sha getting into yeah i'm enterprising i am an explorer i need my space and time and i mean it's it all boils down to to you know uh, the introduction every person is an artist hmm in order to recognize that we need to allow ourselves the time and space hmm to flourish and uh if one scott in the rigmar role of bau uh you don't have that breathing you don't you can't give yourself the license to say okay like wh- why do people have this whole ikigai f- fascination these days hmm. you know they're trying to find their purpose but uh but you what, know what god of i think they're fascinated by ikigai and many other philosophies yeah. but the fact of the matter is that it always existed in some form or shape and sure. we've always been living our life that way probably unknowingly sure right yeah hence i f- i feel that do we really need to label them the point is that uh, you know the most vital ingredient behind all of this is execute so we were going back to the point of just because i'm a farm st- at a farm stay or it's idle or is this the next phase of gorav 2.0 or 4.0 or whatever i've changed my profession almost every few years you know mm. like after that long like i got into music i got into food i've like i mean whatever uh, uh, you know i run a farm stay now um but the the thing is that execution is the most important like i could i could give a friend a guitar for 6 months and he hasn't even taken it off the out of the case sure i don't deny the fact that he is curious about the guitar he has some inclination to learn it but if you're not going to take it out of the case and play start playing every day you're not going to get anywhere yeah so i, I guess that's how um 
the whole narrative of uh, slow and steady wins the race. You put your heart into it, but you also have to go out there and work hard to get what you want to get. Gaurav, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I think um, we'll continue our conversation off the podcast uh, stage. But um, I think one of the things, one of the most important takeaways for me personally has been that um, there is nothing which the human mind um, cannot achieve if we set our mind to it and we put our mind to it and we work hard towards it. Just to say, I, as I'm, uh, as I just live through this conversation, curiosity. Somewhere I feel there is also some amount of misfitting somewhere, right? Uh, and so the podcast episode is aptly titled "God of Shah: The Curious Misfit." Thank you for um, coming over to our show. Thank you for sharing uh, these beautiful human experiences. And I think there is a lot to take away for different people at different uh, stages of their life. Um, I am sure when we meet again, there would be more new experiences for you to share. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And, um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to you being on the show again sometime soon. Thank you so much, Santosh. It's been a pleasure. Uh, chatting with you and thank you for having me on board. It's my pleasure, thank sir. You. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Between Us podcast. This podcast was recorded at Manic Pod Studios in Chambur, Mumbai. Our sound engineer is Moinak Chakraborty, and our producers are Arnav Dogra and Santosh Kumar. The video was processed at Viewfinders Edit. The Between Us podcast uploads episodes weekly, and we'll see you next time.